Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is one of the greatest follow-ups in gaming history. This game doubled the length of the original game by including 11 zones, which is a lot, but did you know that many more were planned? Today, we're talking about the lost levels of Sonic 2, and there's a lot of them. Now, some of them are theorized to be early concepts of other zones, while others are just unique levels that were scrapped from the final release, and we're going to be talking about all of them. Now, I bet you probably already know a thing or two about some of the unused zones in Sonic 2, so I thought I would structure this video like an iceberg chart, kinda. We will start with the most well-known scrap zone, and gradually work our way down to the more, you know, unknown and obscure ones. Anyway, let's get right into it. First up, Hidden Palace Zone. This is by far the most well-known unused stage in Sonic 2, but if you don't know anything about it, then don't worry, I'll gladly fill you in. In an early prototype of Sonic 2, Hidden Palace was supposed to be one of the many zones you play through. However, this wasn't any ordinary zone. This was actually supposed to be where Sonic learned to become Super Sonic. Now, of course, this never came to fruition, because at first it was meant to be two acts, and then it was cut down to one act, and then they just decided to scrap it all together. But there are actually remains of this zone in the final game. Using things like action replay codes and early prototypes of the game, we can see the zone in its unfinished state. Now, this is hardly playable because many of the mechanics that would normally be required for progression are just simply not accessible, but you can tell they made a lot of progress in this zone. Unique backgrounds, assets, hell, and even unique music are all present. A level select icon was even found deep in the game's code. It's clear that this zone got pretty close to completion, but due to time constraints, it was unfortunately scrapped. However, thankfully, many of you probably know that Hidden Palace didn't completely go to waste, as it was completely restored in the Sonic 2 widescreen port that was originally launched for mobile devices. Thanks to Christian Whitehead, we have a fully playable and official version of Hidden Palace, complete with a boss fight and all. You can access it by falling down this pit in Mystic Cave Zone, which by the way, was actually how it was originally intended to be accessed. While this may not be the zone that was originally intended to be in the game, it's awesome that this piece of scrap content was restored in some form so many years later. Alright, next up we got Wood Zone. Now, this zone has two names names, one of them being Wood Zone and the other being Secret Jungle, as seen in early concept art. It's not completely confirmed if these are the same zone, but all signs point to yes, so I'm just going to refer to them as the same. Anyway, Wood Zone is a weird one because it is accessible in earlier prototypes of the game, but it's much more unfinished than Hidden Palace. There are very few platforms and objects to run on. Using the game's hidden debug mode, we can get to this conveyor belt near the top of the stage, but that's as far as we can go. It's very clearly unfinished, at least it is in this particular build of the game. Alright, here's where things get interesting. Just recently, in December of last year, an art portfolio created by artist Branda Cook was uncovered and restored. Now the interesting thing about this is that it includes early footage of many scrap zones from Sonic 2, including Wood Zone. In this short segment, we can see Sonic running through the zone, while spikes extend from the ground trying to hurt him. We can also see the conveyor belt from the prototype of the game in action as well. But yeah, that's pretty much all we have when it comes to Wood Zone. To me, this resembles zones that are seen in later games specifically Triple Trouble and Sonic 3, so I wonder if those took inspiration from this scrap concept. But yeah, unfortunately, unlike Hidden Palace, this concept was not fully realized in the Sonic 2 HD remaster, which would have been awesome to see. Moving on, we have Sand Shower Zone, and we have two screenshots for this one. One of them was taken from the portfolio that housed the Wood Zone footage, and the other one was shown pre-release by, I believe, Brenda Cook as well, but I couldn't find any confirmation on that one. There's a lot to take in here. For one, this would have been the first desert level featured in any Sonic game, but of course Sandopolis became the actual first desert level in Sonic and Knuckles. We can also see several assets, including a pouring sandfall, which could have very well been where the name of the zone originated from. We can also see a scrapped alligator badnik, which actually has sprites present in both prototypes of the game, but of course it was scrapped for the final release. Who knows, maybe this was the original inspiration for Vector's design, even though he was a crocodile, but whatever. But yeah, this is all we have when it comes to Sand Shower Zone. But there was actually an effort to restore this zone in later games. Christian Whitehead, who developed the HD ports of Sonic 1, 2, and CD, wanted to include a reimagining of this zone in the HD port of Sonic CD, called Desert Dazzle Zone, but it was unfortunately scrapped. But thankfully, we ended up getting this zone in a semi-playable state in Sonic Mania, as Mirage Saloon took heavy inspiration from Sand Shower. Pretty cool, right? Alright, then we have Rock World Zone, which needs a little backstory. So, funnily enough, Rock World and Sand Shower are the same zone. It was originally intended for Sand Shower to switch to a snow-themed level halfway through the 
react. And that's why the only shot we have of Rock World is identical to the one we have of Sand Shower, just with a different setting. This was because Sonic 2 was originally supposed to be about time travel, as there were multiple versions of the same zone, just with past and future variants. It is assumed that Rock World was supposed to be the past version of Sand Shower, and this would have been the first time a snow level would have been featured in the Sonic series, but of course, that award goes to Ice Cap from Sonic 3, which fun fact, supposedly reuses assets that were made for Rock World Zone. We can also see some unused badnik concepts that were supposed to be present in this zone. That's pretty neat. Alright, next we have Genocide City Zone, which was renamed later to Cyber City Zone for obvious reasons. Now, this level does have a level slot in the later prototype of the game, but unfortunately, there's nothing here. Just an empty void that immediately kills you upon entering. But even though there's nothing here, we actually know way more about this zone than you think. Multiple concept art and sprite work by Tom Payne, an artist who worked on the game, surfaced recently that was presumably used in the zone. We have very rough designs of the different chunks that were supposed to be used in the zone, and we also have an actual chunk layout which can kind of give us an idea of what the layout of one of the acts was supposed to be. Different sprites by Payne actually gives us an idea of the zone's color palette as well, mostly consisting of purple and blue. And of course, these sprites include multiple objects that would have been used for stage-specific gimmicks, including things like spikes and conveyor belts. Given all of this information, a fully playable mock-up of the zone was pieced together by the Video Game History Foundation, who actually uncovered most of this stuff about Genocide City in the first place, so a huge thank you to them for that. This zone mock-up should not be considered the original intention though, as it is just a mock-up based on multiple design concepts for the zone, but this is an awesome thing to see nonetheless. It's just very cool to me how Cyber City, a once empty zone, was turned into a fully playable idea. Alright, now I wanted to make a separate segment dedicated to multiple zones that have very few concept images, and are mostly earlier versions of stages seen in the final game. First, we have this concept image of Ocean Wind Zone, which looks a lot like Emerald Coast from Sonic Adventure actually. This is presumably just an early version of Emerald Hill Zone though. Then we have Tropical Sun Zone, which could also very well be another early version of Emerald Hill, or maybe even a past or future variant of the zone. Some have also pointed out that this resembles Neo Green Hill Zone from Sonic Advance, which is actually the name for a level slot in the prototypes for Sonic 2 as well. Then we have Blue Ocean Zone, which actually seems to be a completely unique idea, if not a very, very early version of Aquatic Ruin. We also have early sketches of the zone's layout, which also shows multiple sea animals that would have showed up in the background. Then we have Madness Mountain Zone, which is presumably an early version of Mystic Cave Zone, but this art actually reminds me of Marble Zone from Sonic 1 a lot more, so maybe this was originally supposed to be an updated version of that level instead. Then we have Emerald Isle, which from the looks of things, is nothing more than an early name for Aquatic Ruin. Then we have art for an unused level that seemingly took place in space. Of course, this idea would eventually be fully realized in Sonic and Knuckles' Death Egg Zone, but this is still a cool find. Finally, we have Olympus Zone, which has no concept art whatsoever. All we have is its original location in the past version of the world map, which yeah, a world map was actually supposed to be in Sonic 2, but I'm not going to elaborate on that too much in this video because I actually want to make a full video discussing all of the unused content in Sonic 2 at a later time. But yeah, that is every known unused level in Sonic 2. Before the end of this video, I wanted to give a massive thanks to the Video Game History Foundation, who made this video possible in the first place. If you are at all interested in Sonic 2's early stages, then I would highly recommend watching their video about Sonic 2's earlier stages, as they talk about the unused levels as well as the time travel theme in the world maps. I also wanted to thank the people behind Sonic Retro in the cutting room floor for providing additional information about the other unused zones I talked about in this video. But yeah, that's all for me guys, thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all later. Goodbye.